Virgo, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan Hill from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Virgo love reading. In this Virgo reading today, we are going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. I'm going to do that by getting one card to represent the mutual point of interest between the two of you here in April 2024. I'm going to get three cards for you, Virgo, three cards for your person. And then I'm going to clarify everything with a second deck just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. So let's get started and let's get one card for what is the mutual point of interest between Virgo and their romantic person of interest here in April 2024, please. What's going on with you, Virgo? It's been a minute. What's going on with Virgo as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between them in April 2024, please? Let's get one more. Taking an extra one here at the end. Now one still in the deck staring at me here. Okay. <clears throat> What's going on with your person, Virgo? Let's take a look at Virgo's person of interest. What's going on with them as it relates to Virgo and connection between them. Death just flipped over and looked at me and went right back in the deck. Oh, where did you go? I know you're hiding in there. I saw something flip over. I don't think I like what it was. Yeah, there it is. Ah, oh, man. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't read reversals, so whenever a card comes out upside down, I just automatically turn it right side up. I don't even notice I do it most of the time until people flip out on me in the comments. But I had a card here that was reversed. No problem when I flipped it over. This card was reversed when it came out, and it feels funny to me. So we got an issue with this first card. So I'm flipping it back upside down just so I remember to go over something there. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading, <clears throat> excuse me, Ten of Pentacles. <clears throat> That's not bad. This is Virgo energy. This is most people's goal in the physical reality. This is maximum stability, maximum abundance and prosperity. This is the combining together of two people or two families and all their assets and all their resources to build this stable, abundant, prosperous home life together. This is like combining lives together or building a life together. I get this card a lot when people live together or there's a marriage. Right behind that, though, I have the Nine of Wands, which is Sagittarius energy. This is an energy of being walled off and defensive about something. This is the wounded warrior and he's been hurt, which is why he's built this wall around himself. It's a way to protect himself so he doesn't get hurt again, so he doesn't continue to get hurt because he's trying to heal. He's trying to get his energy right so he can move forward and take the next step in his journey. So this indicates there's either some hurt involved here and someone's defenses have come up as a way to protect himself or there is just some barrier in the background here behind this combining lives together idea i do have the two of cups mm, this is cancer energy this is a love connection between two people it's i breathe you in you breathe me in we're connected but it is a two and in tarot twos represent a choice of some kind so this is either a choice about your connection here or sometimes this can represent that there is a choice between more than one person that might be a barrier it could be that there, that's why there's some hurt in the background of being combined together because there could be a serious choice like that happening. Right behind that, I have the hanged man, which is Pisces energy. This is progress being halted. There's no forward movement happening. Things are stuck. They're at a dead standstill. Now, the hanged man does hang upside down because he's trying to look at things from a different perspective than he normally would, like a different point of view than he would normally look at things from. He's trying to gain enlightenment here. He's trying to figure out why is this stuck and how do I get unstuck and move forward from here? The problem with that energy is sometimes this becomes a person who's only looking at things. They're only looking externally to themselves for what's what's wrong. Why is this stuck? It, it's usually like playing the blame game and like, well, I'm stuck because of this thing or I'm stuck because of this person or I'm stuck because of this situation that's outside of me. And a lot of times they they don't take the time to look inside themselves. Hopefully that's not what's going on. Hopefully this is just talking about we're kind of stuck. We ha we have a decision here to make. 
<laughs> looking looking rough com considering what I'm seeing out here. That's the overall energy. That's like the aerial view gist of what it looks like this is going to talk to me about. We might have to come back to that more as we go along. But this mutual point of interest is shared energy that affects both of you in some way here in April 2024. This doesn't always affect you both exactly the same way. Like sometimes they do this and you feel the consequences of it or vice versa. Sometimes they say or do something and it makes you feel or act this way or vice versa. Sometimes it's legitimately something external happening to both of you. But this mutual point of interest for you, Virgo, is the chariot. This is the Cancer Major Arcana card. This is the fastest moving energy in the whole deck most of the time. I'll tell you why in a minute. At its core, this card is about the will to overcome obstacles and challenges and roadblocks and problems that are in the way. It's like overcoming all of that, getting past all of that through sheer will alone, and then moving forward very quickly in success and victory. <clears throat> The thing I was talking about is this is either the fastest energy in the deck where it's every bit as stuck as the hanged man because there's an issue of alignment with this card that the driver doesn't have reins to connect it to the beasts that pull it and on a normal tarot deck there's a black sphinx and a white sphinx and that represents the dark side and the light side of a person because we all have that shadow element to us and the driver has to use sheer will alone to control this thing so he's got to be in perfect alignment in other words both parts of himself have to be pulling in the same direction or this thing doesn't move anywhere or worse yet it tears itself in half as it tries to move forward because there's two pieces of itself going different ways so this could indicate that there's definitely some sort of a challenge here some sort of a, a barrier to get past in this connection and there's at least the will to overcome it, hopefully, because another meaning to this card is it can be someone just getting in the chariot and getting the hell out of here. It's like very fast moving energy. So I'm going to clarify this and see what else I can find out. <clears throat> Tell me more about the chariot, please. Why is this the mutual point of interest between Virgo? Okay, definitely got a lot to this one here. I keep getting a lot of people ask me, like, man, I love your readings, but they're too long. Can you make them short, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes? Like, yeah, sure. Like, I get to dictate how the readings go. I don't get to choose the messages. The messages come through. I get to receive them and relay them. I asked for three cards, and you saw it. I just got five, so this is why they end up taking longer. I asked for three here, and I got four, so I don't get to dictate that. Clarifying this chariot, on the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Cups. This is Pisces energy of emotionally detaching and then physically detaching, physically walking away. The person on the card is walking away from eight full cups of love because they think there's something better out there. So they're going down this brand new path. They're leaving behind what they have to go down a new path, looking for their ninth and their tenth cup, their personal happiness and wish fulfillment, that happily ever after that they want, their version of that. So <clears throat> sometimes this can represent your person having like the grass is greener on the other side of the fence type of a thing going on and they got to go find out. Usually what they find out is the grass isn't greener on the other side of the fence. The grass is greener where you water it, where you nurture it, where you pour something of yourself into it. So they usually find out it's not greener over there and then eventually they try to come back. That could be what's happening. We are in Mercury retrograde. I would say out of the last 15 readings that I've done, maybe one of them hasn't had the Six of Cups, like the card from the past, showing back up. So it won't surprise me if I see that here. But this is either them walking away to see if the grass is greener, and maybe that's the obstacle that we need to overcome. Maybe that's them just getting the hell out of Dodge real pronto. Sometimes this can be a warning for you that eight cups is the best you're ever going to get out of this person they're not capable of doing any more than eight cups no more than i'm not capable of slam dunking a basketball so like if you're building a basketball team and you want a star player you probably want to go pick somebody that's not me because i can't slam dunk and i'm never going to be able to and that's kind of what this could be saying about your person is like they're not capable of ten of cups with you. It's not it's not doable now and it's not ever going to be. So if, if you want to be happy and you want your own wish fulfillment and you want that happily ever after that you deserve, you're going to have to walk away from this person in order to go find that. When I clarify the chariot, I got 
five instead of three. I got the queen of wands, the eight of wands, the chariot again, the ten of cups, and the two of cups. Wow. <clears throat> queen of wands. This is either Leo or Aries energy. This is a bold, passionate, fiery, determined person that knows exactly what she wants. She doesn't really take no for an answer. She goes out and she gets what she wants. On the negative side, this can be a drama queen type of an energy, like someone who like brings unnecessary drama with them, kind of starts some shit sometimes. This is also a person who would be like attractive and charming and good looking and fun to be around. There would be like attraction and desire toward this person. I'm I'm feeling like third party already and up. I'm not, I'm not digging the way this feels right here. Eight of Wands is next. This is the second fastest moving energy in the decks. So we've already seen the fastest moving energy. This is Sagittarius energy. This is like very fast forward movement, forward progress on something that there's a lot of passion and desire for. <clears throat> this can be rapid back and forth passionate communications happening, especially when I got Queen of Wands out here with it. That could be what this barrier is. That could be this other cup that hmm, th this is this is like a lot happening at one time this would be like so much happening that it's too hard to process it's too hard to like it'd be overwhelming feeling then i got the chariot again which is the card i'm clarifying now so this is the universe beating me over the head like dude i'm telling you something is moving very very quickly here there is still down the center of this this underlying will to overcome the obstacles and the challenges. But you see what I was saying here? There's the Black Sphinx and the White Sphinx. And if he's not in alignment, this thing ain't moving any more than the Hanged Man is. Or worse yet, if it does, it will rip itself in half. It, and you guys feel like you're pulling in two different directions here. Next card I have is the Ten of Cups, which is that happily ever after that we all dream about. This is most people's goal in love and relationships. It's Pisces energy of like being emotionally happy and content and being together and pouring yourselves into each other to where everyone is fully loved and fully happy this is like a, a true love like happily ever after kind of a thing but there's a negative side to every card in the deck there's a positive side to every card in the deck the negative side to the ten of cups is that this is something that we'll delude ourselves in order to try and achieve like we all want this so badly and we all want to believe that the relationship that I'm in is this happily ever after that I've always dreamed of. This is the perfect true love thing that I've always wanted, that everyone wants. And we want that so bad that at times we'll convince ourselves that that's what we have, even though there's all kinds of signs that point to it's probably not that. All these red flags that we ignore and look the other way on, all the shit we sweep under the rug and ignore it, because if that stuff is true, then this definitely isn't true, and I want this to be true, so I'm just going to pretend like I didn't see that. That kind of an energy gets more people in trouble than just about any card in the entire tarot deck. It, it, it creates like a, a self-delusional thing sometimes. <clears throat> if this is Ten of Cups, I don't understand why one of you is emotionally detaching and walking away. It feels to me like it's this person that's doing that right off the bat. Yeah, King of Swords right underneath that. This is like common sense and logic and reason and like just looking at the truth and the facts of what's right in front of you. And deciding based on that and not not bringing your emotions into this like this is saying emotionally detach and use logic and reason and look at the truth and the facts and decide that way make the best most logical most rational decision available because there is definitely a decision that needs to be made here two of swords is Libra energy of a decision that needs made only it hasn't been made yet the person on the card is wearing a blindfold and sometimes that blindfold could mean there's just not enough information available yet to make a decision and that's why it hasn't been made but sometimes it can represent a person who's wearing the blinders who's who doesn't want to see something like there's something that's there and they know it's there but they don't want to look at it so that's like refusing to take off the blinders choosing to be in denial about something and then that preventing you from making a decision or just choosing to be stubborn and choosing not to decide 
I think there's definitely an element of another person here. I got the six of cups, six of pentacles next, shit, and the ace of cups under that. This is Taurus energy. Sometimes this is balanced. Like you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Like equal give and take. We take care of each other equally. But sometimes this is the merchant giving to two people in the physical sentence. And notice one of them is being hidden behind him. Ace of Cups next is a new beginning in love and emotions. I think we got a problem going on here. And in a sense, like your person, this King of Swords can feel like someone who's very emotionally distant or emotionally disconnected or just like cold, cold and calculated even. It's not like them to be undecisive about something. This really feels like you have these emotions that are keeping you stuck in something that's not fully what you want. And it's not ever going to be what you want. And the emotions probably keep you from walking away. This underlying will to overcome the stuff that's in the way. I understand not wanting something taken away from you. But this feels like something that needs to go here. And the emotions are preventing that. And logic and reason in the background would allow you to disconnect from this and there's something that you don't want to see and i think it's because you've gotten yourself to believe that this is the ten of cups for you and it's not like if you stop and think about what does true love actually mean to you what what does happily ever after really mean to you what does it look like and if you visualize that and then next to it you put the image of what you've had with this person and then tell me if they actually match or not it's like that that card game when we were little kids memory where you flip over a card and you try to find a match and if it doesn't match you got to put it face down in somebody else's turn and i think that's what is happening here i think that's what's happening here i think your person has probably moved really really fast with someone else and that's like that's put some damage on this idea here of ten of cups ten of pentacles i mean this is like this is everybody's goal right here but there's there's something in the way there's hurt attached to all of this and it looks like it's directly related to two cups like a choice between two people and i knocked the two of cups on the floor from the other deck i think that's why things are stuck and not moving which that brings me to the next card, the Two of Cups. Like I said, this is Cancer Energy. It's it's a two, it's a choice about this connection, but it's probably also a choice between two different people here. I'm going to set this aside. That's the shared energy that's affecting both of you. I will come back to this as I go through your energy just to make sure I'm getting this right and see how it relates to you. I'll come back to it again as I go through your person's energy because then I'll be able to see how it relates to them. But I'm not liking what I see over here at all. In your energy, Virgo, your first card is always going to be your most important. For you, it's the Seven of Pentacles. Central to your energy is the Three of Cups. And the final card for you came out as two. We got the five of wands and the ace of wands. The seven of pentacles. This is Taurus energy. This is a period of time. Usually it's a period of time where you're pausing to reflect and take stock of this connection that you're in. Take stock of this situation that you're finding yourself in. And it's about looking at the seeds that have been planted between the two of you and trying to decide... Are these seven seeds going to grow into this ten of pentacles that I really want where we actually have our lives combined together and we're actually building a life together as equals? Is it ever going to turn into that? Is this worth me continuing to invest all of my time, my effort, my energy, pour all of myself into this? Or is this a spot where it's not ever going to pan out the way I want it to and maybe it's time for me to cut my losses and move on? So this is that period of time where you're reflecting and asking yourself those types of questions. This can also represent a period of time. Like if you think about when you plant seeds in the ground, like if you go plant an apple tree outside right now, 
you can't come out tomorrow and get apples from that. It's not, it doesn't work that way. There's a period of time where you have to wait on this plant to grow and fully develop and put fruit on it and wait for the fruit to ripen so you can harvest it then. This is like that kind of a period of time where you're waiting on something to pan out and you're still waiting right now. I'm going to clarify that for you. Tell me more about this Seven of Pentacles, please. Why is that the first card in Virgo of Energy? <clears throat> this one's making me sad. I'm feeling it. On the bottom of the deck. Yeah. Ten of Pentacles. Is this ever going to turn into the Ten of Pentacles I want? That's the overall energy here. And there's something stopping it. And there's hurt tied to this. This is combining lives together. The Magician. This is the Mac Daddy Master Manifester of the Tarot deck. This is someone who has all the tools and resources to shape the world around them to be any way their will wants it to be. He's got all four aces on the table. The aces are the ones of the four suits. 1111. It's the number of manifesting. This tells me that you're actively trying to manifest this building a life together whether this is living together or getting married or being married whatever that is that's what you are trying to create the negative side here is a lot of times in this first column a lot of the energy here is there because of stuff that your person's doing so this could also be at the same time telling me that your person has created some sort of a situation here yeah, this is you trying to manifest this Ten of Pentacles and it taking forever. The, the Knight of Pentacles is the slowest night in the deck. This is like watching molasses roll. It's like one of my favorite sayings is it's slower than duck shit rolling uphill. This is like very monotonous, make you want to pull your hair out kind of an energy because there's something that you want and you wanted it like yesterday and you're getting the slow snail's pace instead. This can also represent a person who knows what they're supposed to do and doesn't do it. He's holding the Ace of Pentacles. That's the seed of abundance. That's the seed that grows into the Ten of Pentacles here that you want. And he's got it. He knows he has it. He's holding it. He's looking directly at it. But the fields in the background are empty. He hasn't gotten off his ass and planted the seed yet. He knows he's supposed to, but he doesn't. The opposite can also be true because likewise he knows he's not supposed to just sit on his ass, but that's exactly what he's doing anyway. So we got a person here in the background that looks like they're manifesting something either from a doing something they're not supposed to be doing kind of an energy, I think, is what this is feeling like. <clears throat> Nine of Pentacles. A lot of Pentacles here. This is a step backwards from the Ten of Pentacles. That's also Virgo energy, but this is a single energy. This is like not combined together physically. This is physically independent, physically single. I can take care of myself. I don't need you to physically or financially take care of me. I can do it on my own. It's like very prosperous, independent energy. But it can also be, especially if we're talking about a person who's manifesting stuff, from a position of doing what I know I'm not supposed to do. Like, this would be not being single, actually, being in a Ten of Pentacles combined together situation, but I'm presenting myself in the physical world as if I am single. I feel like that's probably what your person is doing over here. And this is feeling like a really long, drawn-out period for you where you're waiting on it to turn into the Ten of Pentacles. That's what you're actively trying to create, but you're just, you're getting like, no, it looks like no progress is happening. Like, it's really hard to tell the difference between that Knight of Pentacles and the Hanged Man when you're going through it. And I did see the Hanged Man in the overall energy. <clears throat> when I clarify Seven of Pentacles for you, Virgo, I get the Ace of Pentacles, Seven of Wands, and the Star. The Ace of Pentacles, like I said, is that seed of abundance. It's the seed that has the potential to turn into the Ten of Pentacles that we all want. But it's just the seed. It's like you have to grab this and do something with it or it just represents empty potential. It's going to take like work, time, effort, and energy and not just from you. It's going to also have to come from the other person in order to get there. This also represents a new physical, real-world, tangible opportunity presenting itself, like a physical opportunity of some kind. 
I'm getting a lot of feeling here that these cards have a meaning for you and at the same time there's an element of what your person has done in a different sense there. I think they had a physical opportunity with someone that they had attraction and desire for and then things got hot and heavy and he didn't moving forward very quickly in spite of actually being together with you already. That's what it looks like. I'm sorry if this is triggering for you, but I'm just trying to get you the truth so I can help. Seven of Wands is your next card. This is Leo energy. It's defensive energy. This is defending my position on something, defending my stance on something, being willing to fight to protect what it is that I want or what I believe in, what I desire, fight for my connection. This is also defensive energy in that you're having to defend against oncoming external energy coming at you here. And got, got caught off guard, unprepared. The dude on the card is wearing two different shoes because something happened fast and he just had to throw on whatever he had around. It didn't have time to think about it. It's just like, oh shit, here it is. I got that feeling from the Eight of Wands and it's like all of that coming at you suddenly. This is like you wanting to fight to protect all the seeds that you've planted, all you've invested in this connection, what you believe that this connection is. This is you being defensive about all of that, which would I probably triggered you here at the beginning when I talked about this, how I'm viewing the Ten of Cups for you and how this is feeling. I'm probably triggering you right now. And like I said, I'm not intending to do that. I'm just trying to like get you to see so that you can detach emotionally and use logic and reason to help you here. This is probably you wanting to fight for the connection because I have the star next. This is the Aquarius Major Arcana card. This is a card of hope. It's a card of healing. Sometimes in a love reading, this can indicate that you believe that your person is the one for you. I do need to make that abundantly clear. Whenever you get a card like that in a tarot reading, like the star or the lovers, for example, that's not God or spirit or source or the universe or the divine or however you personally believe about that. That's not direct beamed down data from them saying that yep this person is the one for them that's not what it ever means in any tarot reading when you get one of those kind of cards what it means is this is showing up in your energy so you may believe that at some point in time this is a card that comes immediately after the tower in the sequence of the cards so you don't ever make it to the star energy without going through a tower moment of some kind first where some important thing in your life comes crashing down all around you maybe that's the collapse of the relationship itself maybe it's the collapse of a belief system like this model of the world that you're operating from where you believe things are this way and then it turns out something happens and Oh shit, it's not quite that way after all. This would be like when that happens, it's like well, someone scratched the record. It doesn't play the same anymore. Like nothing's the same after that. And everything I believed is just shattered now. And it's hard to see your path moving forward. Well, this is that guiding light from the universe that lights the way for you. So you can see your path moving forward. This is where hope comes from. It's where healing comes from. I've seen the Nine of Wands, which is a card of healing. So that's an indicator that someone's been hurt. I've got the star here, which is an indicator that you have been hurt, like probably tremendously. And this is probably you doing some healing, but it is also like you're wanting to fight for this. So this is you trying to fight to maintain the hope that this can be healed between the two of you, that we can overcome these obstacles that are in the background here for us. The, what's in the background, I'm telling you, is another cup. There's, there's no... There's no question about it, especially with what I'm seeing out here that I haven't gotten to yet. Central to your energy, Virgo, is the Three of Cups. This is Cancer energy. Now, this can be being united and celebrating. It can be reconciliation about being reunited and celebrating. But this can also represent a third-party love triangle because there are three cups of love in the picture here. So let me clarify that. Tell me more about the Three of Cups. Why is that central to Virgo's energy, please? You just saw justice flip over and show itself and go back in the deck, but it didn't come out. So we're not actually getting justice here. 
the hand. Bottom of the deck, Knight of Cups. This is actions toward love and emotions. This is moving forward with romantic offers, romantic gestures, like trying to advance a love offer, trying to move forward in a love connection. That's probably what you're doing. You're probably trying to fight for the connection and overcome this shit and like get reunited and move forward together. That looks like what you want. But again, behind your emotions is logic and reason and common sense screaming at you. This is like, look at the truth, look at the facts and decide based on that. This is a person who throws their emotions out the window. Like think about how you would want a judge to act and make their decisions if they were like presiding over a case that involved your child as an example you would want them to be completely fair you wouldn't want them to like be in a bad mood and have some bad emotions and then make a bad decision like you wouldn't want their emotions to cloud their judgment and that's what this is talking about this is just logic and reason and analysis of the truth and the facts so this is either you're moving for trying to move forward with the person who's like emotionally distant and calculated or this is cautionary of like don't don't get fixated on this thing that you want because logic and reason is telling you that the thing that you want is never going to pan out the way you expect it to there's that disconnecting emotionally energy again of the eight of cups like this person ain't capable of giving you nine cups and ten cups eight is the absolute best you're going to get from them but then there's still that temperance energy behind it. This is also reconciliation. This is the Sagittarius Major Arcana card. It's about patience. It's about blending things together to make something new and doing it little bits at a time and making adjustments along the way, like fine-tuning things, not, not expecting it to be perfect right out of the gate and being able to adjust things. It's also reconciliation because water represents love and emotions and here the water has been separated into two different cups and this angel is recombining the water back together recombining the love back together re reconciling the situation between the two of you <clears throat> it's clear that's what you want when i clarify the three of cups i get the six of pentacles the sun the seven of pentacles and judgment I see a few things here. I got minor arcana, major arcana, minor arcana, major arcana. So there's a pattern. The other pattern I have here is we're going from six of pentacles to seven of pentacles. So things are advancing in, in the physical energy here. The six of pentacles is Taurus energy. It's either generosity and reciprocity, like equal give and take, balancing the connection out, or this is the merchant giving to two people in the physical sense i'm i'm clarifying what could be a third cup of love being involved there has been forward movement in love and emotions here this looks like your person giving to two people and at the same time you wanting to balance it out behind this idea of giving to two is a physical opportunity to do that but then this is also you looking for the opportunity to balance this out with them Next, I have the Sun, which is the Leo Major Arcana card. This is the happiest card in the deck. It's happiness, joy, bliss, harmony. Like, you really cannot get a better card than the lovers in a love reading. This tells me that you have a lot of happiness tied to this connection, tied to your person. Like, if you look at the way our solar system is put together, the Sun is in the middle of it, and all the planets are in orbit around the Sun because the Sun has all the gravity. This connection has a lot of gravity for you. A lot of happiness is tied to it. Now, I'd be lying to you by omission if I didn't tell you the other meaning of the sun. And it can represent illumination. The card that comes before the sun is the moon. So when the moon's out, it's dark outside. Things, you, things can be lurking in the darkness that you don't see. Things can be hidden in the dark. Secrets can be kept. The next step is the sun comes out and now it's not dark anymore. So all that stuff that was hiding in the dark, all that stuff that was being kept from you gets exposed. And I've got an energy here of being defensive against seeing something. Either someone being defensive and not wanting you to see it or you not wanting to see it. 
again, I'm, I, I feel compelled to say I'm sorry because I know everything I'm saying right now is probably not feeling good for you. But I'm, there's a reason why I call my channel Unknown Truth Tarot. I'm going to get you the truth. I'm not going to hand you a dog turd and put a bunch of sprinkles and glitter on it and try and tell you it's some magnificent candy bar when I know damn well it's not. I'm going to tell you the truth even when it's not what you want to hear. Seven of Pentacles is next. We already saw this. This was the first card in your energy, the most important card for you. That period of time where we're either pausing to reflect at this and take a look at all the stuff that I've actually seen, even though I didn't want to see it. This someone getting illuminated for giving to two and having three cups. This is that period of time where you're supposed to be pausing to reflect and take stock of all of this stuff. It's also that period of time, probably, where things were going on that you saw but didn't want to see. It's even probably also a period of time where you've been waiting on this to move forward the way that you want it to, to turn into this Ten of Pentacles and this Ten of Cups that you want. And you're still waiting on that to pan out. And still, while you wait, hoping that it's going to pan out, hoping that this can be healed. Final clarifier for this Three of Cups is Judgment. This is a very powerful major arcana card. It represents a final decision being made. This is like passing a final verdict in judgment on something. Most of the time, this will be passing that final verdict in judgment that this is now dead and over with. There's no more talking about it. It's officially dead and there's no coming back. The other time, when it's not that, this will be reconciliation energy. So there's three cards in the deck that to me mean reconciliation. The three of cups that I'm clarifying now. This temperance card that we just saw. And now judgment. I've got all three of them right down your central energy. So again, this is you still waiting on this to be resurrected. To be brought back to life. To be brought back from the dead. Having the hope that that can happen. Final card in your energy, like I said, came out as two. We got the Five of Wands and the Ace of Wands. Five of Wands is Leo energy. Fives are conflict. Con they're change. This is a conflict in desires, an internal conflict where there's a piece of you that wants this one thing and there's this other piece of you that wants this different thing and now I'm torn between these two things and I'm torn and playing tug of war inside myself in terms of what I desire. I said that about the chariot at the beginning. There's that element of alignment where you, both parts of yourself have to be pulling the same direction. That's in the shared energy. So th to me, that really means that you have to be pulling in the same direction and they have to be pulling in that same direction with you. And you guys can't be pulling against each other. And this feels like pulling against each other in that sense, but it also feels like there's pieces of you that you're struggling against right now. Then I have the Ace of Wands with that. This is a passionate new beginning. It's a new beginning in passion and desire. Sometimes this can represent wanting to re-spark the connection, to fire the connection back up, re-spark the passion and the desire of the connection, like start back over at the beginning again. But this is also the phallic symbol of the tarot deck. So it represents the male you-know-what and using that to be intimate. It represents sexual energy, sex, things of that nature. I did see right at the beginning, I got two wand cards here in the clarifiers of what's affecting you both. Some attractive person that there's attraction and desire toward. And a lot of very fast moving, either back and forth passionate communicating or a lot of really fast forward movement toward passion and desire. <clears throat> Can represent travel too. In fact, I've got the chariot out here twice in this mess. All those cards can represent travel over great distances. So take that piece however it resonates for you. I'm going to clarify this five of wands, ace of wands. Please tell me more about that. Why is that? Yep, I called that, didn't I? God bless America. On the bottom of the deck, Ten of Pentacles. Seen it a bunch. It's the overall energy. You know what that means at this point. 
you're internally conflicted about this because there has been a you a piece of you wants to spark this back up and get this back but then there's another piece of you that's going a different direction where they were going a different direction there's nine of swords behind that this is gemini energy this is fear worry anxiety thinking about stuff so much with all this fear and worry behind your thinking that it becomes physically stressful this is like thoughts like you can't stop you there you're not in control of them anymore this is it's like your mind is going and you can't shut up and those thoughts are manifesting as stress for you the person on the card has their eyes covered because the situation is so bad in their mind that they don't want to face it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to look at it. Two of Pentacles. This is Capricorn energy. This is Pentacles are physical, real world, tangible energy, tangible things. This is someone who is juggling two people. It's someone who's one foot in and one foot out, not fully mind made up about something. Now, this could be applying to you. You could have fear, worry, and anxiety, and you could be off balance right now, and you could be trying to get your balance back and maintain your balance and not lose your balance, but you're undecided about something. You're weighing options, looking at pros and cons. Do I or don't I? Should I or shouldn't I? Do I have this Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups, or don't I? But this can also be like there's this piece that you don't want to look at where they're giving to two. And I don't blame you. I don't want to see that shit either. I really don't. But there's an off-balance energy and a decision here. If you're manifesting from a place of fear, worry, and anxiety and being totally off-balance and like you can see the water in the background is waves. It's rough, choppy emotions is what that represents. So if you're manifesting from off balance rough choppy emotions being stuck in your head in mental anguish and fearful and worried and thinking constantly about fearful and worrisome stuff and you try to manifest from that state that is exactly how you manifest the thing you're afraid of it's exactly how you manifest the thing that you're worried about you make it happen if that's what you do but this is also again the master manifester over here has created a situation where they're juggling two people and they've created this situation that's got you trapped in your mind and anxiety probably because they had a passionate new beginning when i clarify this five of wands ace of wands i get the six of cups the wheel of fortune the king of wands and the devil Oh my God. Oh my God. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I'm not getting ahead of myself. This one is bothering the shit out of me. It really is. Six of Cups is Scorpio energy of the past. This is thinking about the past, reminiscing about the past, thinking about the good old days and the way things used to be between the two of you. Like I said, we're in Mercury retrograde now. This card has come out almost every reading. I think there's been one that it hasn't for a minute. This can represent that there is a lot of history in this connection between the two of you. There's, It's not a new connection. There's a deep emotional connection that you feel for this person here. This can also represent something from your past coming back up again. Like sometimes that's an idea that you had in the past and you didn't act on that idea. And now it, that idea is coming back up. Sometimes this can represent that this passionate new beginning that they started is with someone from their past. And now this past person has made a comeback. This could even just be if you guys are broken up and you're all trying to fight for the connection and hoping that you can heal it and waiting on it to heal and waiting on it to be resurrected and sparked back up. This, this could be you wanting the past back and all the nostalgia of it and wanting to, to balance it all out and looking for the opportunity to do that. A card could have several different layers to it, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It can represent an element from the past if this is a third party situation 
could be like this ain't the first time that there's been a third party situation if this idea of like waiting on it and waiting on it and waiting on it and still not actually having it and trying to convince yourself that you do have it even though there's signs that you don't that could be something from your past that's coming up again this could be the way to point it out to you maybe there's something that's not healed there with what i'm seeing here i've got the wheel of fortune next uh, this represents the four fixed signs of the zodiac leo taurus aquarius and scorpio this is like divine timing this is the wheel of fate the wheel of destiny this can be a fated event this can represent a cyclic energy here something cycling through a lot of times this will represent that what's supposed to happen is going to happen and there's not a damn thing you can do about it we've got a cycle of something from the past repeating It feels like that the wheel in the sky keeps on turning and it's like tick 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 nice and slow and it's just you're still waiting on it to click over to happiness and it's not happening and there's this you want to fight for it this is almost like an energy of like i'm gonna spin the wheel myself but you can't you can't king of wands this is either leo or sagittarius energy i feel like i've said leo quite a bit what else do I have? I've said Taurus a few times, Cancer a few times, Sagittarius, Pisces, and fixed signs, Scorpio there. Like you could be dealing with any of those signs. You could be dealing with any sign. This is a general collective reading. So it's going to be almost impossible to tell exactly who you're dealing with because I'm not tapping into your specific energy as an individual person the same way I would if I was doing a personal reading for you. Here I'm tapping into thousands of Virgo people all at once. So I'm just going to keep calling the signs out in case they mean anything to you. But this is Leo or Sagittarius. This is a bold, passionate, fiery, determined person that knows what they want. They go after what they want. They don't take no for an answer. They don't let obstacles get in the way. They don't let roadblocks stop them. This is the kind of person that's going to find a way or they're going to make a way to get what they want. It's the pinnacle of that wand suit. Like I said, the wand is the phallic symbol of the deck. It represents passion, desire, sexual energy, sex. This is a person who's very driven and motivated, not just in the normal sense, but in that sense as well. It's the counterpart to this queen of wands here. This tells me that you're probably, you want your person really bad and you probably view them as charming and you know good looking and attractive and something that you have desire for. But there's also this element of them being the counterpart in that sexual energy, passion, desire sense with someone. And that moved quickly. You still have the hope here, but you're still waiting on them. Like this feels like you're waiting on what you're really waiting on, whether you've seen this or not, have realized it or not. What you're waiting on is for them to want you as much as you want them. And I'm sorry. Again, I'm sorry. Like we have the devil as the final clarifier here. This is Capricorn's major arcana card. This is a heavy toxic energy. This is obsession. This is addiction. This is a feeling of being trapped by something, feeling like I can't escape from it. Like, look, these are the same two people from the lover's card. But here, they're not here because they want to be. They're here because they're chained to this thing. They can't escape. And they're in this distorted, toxic environment, and it's distorting who they are. Like, they're growing horns and tails, and it, they're they're becoming different they're distorted versions of themselves from being in this this tells me there's toxicity in this connection this tells me that you probably have some element of your shadow like maybe a piece of yourself that you don't like maybe it's a piece of you where you've been hurt at some point in the past and you never properly addressed that emotional wound you, you never healed from it properly a lot of times i'll get this when somebody has had something happen and they just try to move right past it they try to like repress it and shove it down inside of themselves and pretend like they're fine and pretend like i'm, I'm okay that didn't even happen to me I'm, i don't even need to do anything with this i'm just ignoring it and i'm going on but something did happen if that's the case and this would be 
like when you get hurt, there's a message that the pain is trying to deliver to you. There's a meaning behind the pain and it needs to get that message to you. And if you refuse to face it, if you refuse to sit with it and feel the emotions, you can never like receive the message. But just because you repress it and push it down and pretend like it's not there doesn't make the pain go away and it doesn't make the message go away and it doesn't make your requirement to experience that feeling and that message go away like it's supposed to happen and that when i have the devil and the wheel of fortune especially this close together this is the karmic hamster wheel this is like something has happened and you were supposed to learn a lesson from that only you didn't learn the lesson so now you're being forced to repeat the lesson and this is like being stuck on that karmic hamster wheel and just going and going and going and going and never getting anywhere what's stuck between these two cards is that king of wands this is like this is almost screaming this is a toxic person that you're not supposed to be with and for some reason you have convinced yourself that you are supposed to be with them and you're just going round and round and round with them this feels like they have a toxic streak to them and they repeat that cycle a lot there's probably been a history of them having passionate new beginnings if not with you then they have been doing that with other people probably for a good long period of time like even even down to the judgment like this decision to resurrect it you would be resurrecting something that's not for you something that you're just trapped in this is time to call judgment like final verdict and judgment on this toxic connection it's like calling it dead and over with that's your energy virgo take a look at your person's energy their first card is always the most important. I got that Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Like I said, I don't read reversals, but something's wrong with this energy. So I'm leaving it there. Next card, you're not going to believe this. Central to their energy, Wheel of Fortune. And the final card for your person, the Devil. We just saw the Wheel of Fortune in the Devil over here in your energy. And I said in the center of it all was your person. And then over here in their energy... There's the Wheel of Fortune and the Devil again. I've got the Karmic Hamster Wheel twice in one spread. I've never had that happen before. At this point, I've probably got like 700 readings on YouTube. I've done thousands of personal readings. It's like, I've never seen this in one spread before. Definitely something bad, bad wrong with this situation. This Queen of Pentacles in reverse in the upright and this is capricorn energy in the upright this is like a loving mothering nurturing energy this would be wife energy mother energy like the centerpiece of this ten of pentacles she works together as equals with the king of pentacles that's who builds this and manages this but we got something upside down here so that's like not loving nurturing energy if your wife to this person they have a very skewed view of what wife is. They probably have a very skewed view of what woman is, what feminine energy is. Like this is not I don't I don't like Queen of Pentacles in reverse, especially for a person's first card. Tell me about Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Why is that here, please? Why is that here for a burglar's person? Got some in the deck flip over here when we got sure that was it yes no there's another one i think double check okay bottom of the deck the empress this is the mother of the tarot deck this is she's always pregnant so she's always giving birth to something in a love reading she either represents the birth of something new as in a new connection or she represents the rebirth of a connection. Ain't no rebirth with this. Temperance. Man, I don't like this person. Another thing that Queen of Pentacles in reverse could be. It's like a distorted wife energy. A distorted view of 
women or feminine energy even to the point of like manipulating them i got the magician out here i've seen the magician twice over here with this devil out here twice the wheel of fortune with it twice we got some bad shit going on this could be a person who's trying who's birthing new stuff with other people and at the same time trying to stay blended together with you possibly even trying to use this idea of you wanting to be wife you wanting to build a life together with them using that against you in some way king of swords look at the facts of what's happened so far that's the only thing i can keep telling you like i get wanting to believe i get it and the last thing i want to do is take anyone's belief away from them as long as it's an empowering belief it's if i don't even give a shit if it's true or not as long as it empowers you but this is not empowering you this is disempowering you this is disabling you this is keeping you in pain and trapped and you're dealing with a person who basically feels emotionless they, they're probably not emotionless but they, they don't give two shits this is I'm taking care of myself I'm doing what's in my own best interest and what's in my best interest is to birth new relationships and then also try to keep you with this idea of being recombined together when i clarify queen of pentacles in reverse ten of swords queen of cups eight of swords and the magician yeah that's exactly what this person is doing ten of swords is gemini energy this is a swift painful ending to something this is an ending you probably didn't see coming i saw from the beginning how fast this was three two the fastest card in the deck twice and the second fastest card in the deck this is probably an ending in betrayal which is why the swords are in your back you got stabbed in the back here i have a feeling that they they just because you can doesn't mean you should and they can hurt you and i think they do queen of cups is next like this is cancer energy. This is the person that gets they get love and emotions from. That's you. They've hurt this person. She's got a lid on her cup. She's she's guarded. She's been hurt before. She doesn't want to get hurt again. She wants to pour her love into someone though, which is why she ultimately takes the lid off and does that. But there's an ending with that. Eight of Swords. And at the same time, we're keeping this queen you stuck in your head grinding in circles over and over and over again just looping it through your mind the blindfold represents their stuff that you don't know you don't have access to all the information there's gaps in your knowledge it'd be like reading a government document about ufos and like 82 percent of the words on the page have a big black line through them and you can't see what it says like that's kind of what this is like keeping you in that state where you don't really know what's going on and then you get stuck in your head and not sure what's the safe move to make and you don't want to make a mistake and then you get stuck and trapped and blocked and it's almost like i want to create that situation to keep you stuck to keep you from being able to leave me like I, you're you should be this way but you're this way it's like and the last clarifier is the magician, the person who, whose like thoughts and actions create this situation. The negative piece of the magician is like, yeah, he creates the world to be how he wants it. He does magic. He reaches into the universe, does stuff, you know, it changes the place. But that's a form of manipulation. So this can, he's manipulating the energies. He's manipulating the universe. He can easily manipulate people with their, with their mind, getting them stuck in their head. This, this is killing me. i got to take a break after this one. Wheel of Fortune. This is a change in luck and fortune. It's a turn of events. It's that pivotal moment where the wheel spins the other way and everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Now, this can also be the opposite. Sometimes things have been going to hell in a handbasket and this is the wheel spinning to correct course. But I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that's what's going on for a second. This is a cycle repeating something that there was supposed to be a lesson from tell me about the wheel why is that central energy for virgo's person please
feel like this reading is probably going to be a long one and I didn't want it to be, but like I said, I don't really get to choose what the message is or how it has to come out. So, bottom of the deck, Two of Pentacles, Capricorn Energy. <clears throat> this is off balance energy. It's one foot in, one foot out. Can't make up my mind. I got these two physical things and I can't have both of them and I literally have to choose one and I'm weighing options, looking at the pros and cons. It can be a person who's juggling two people and this could be a period of time where they've been doing that or a repeating cycle of them juggling two people and killing the relationship. Death. It's the Scorpio Major Arcana card. This is an ending. This is something dying so it can be reborn again in a different way. This is a painful ending. It's a painful transition period afterwards. Painful transformation process taking place to this Ten of Pentacles, which we keep seeing over and over. It's like the theme of the reading, being together, being combined together, physically together, married, however that works for you. There's an ending to that, and then there's all that fear, worry, and anxiety that we've already seen. Oh man, this could be at some point in time they were fearful and worried and anxious that you were going to find out what was going on or find, you know, fearful and worried of what it was going to do to the marriage or even just the assets of the marriage. Like, totally depends. You're going to have to take that piece how it resonates for you because I'm not going to try and label your person any more than I already have. When I clarify Wheel of Fortune, I get four of wands. Knight of Swords, Three of Wands. <clears throat> a lot of wand energy down the center here. Four of Wands is Aries energy. Fours are stability, so this is stability of the home life, stability of the family life, stability of the connection between the two of you. I think that has taken a major left turn probably into the brick wall. These four wands represent 1111, which is the number of manifesting. I already mentioned that earlier at the beginning when I saw the magician in your energy somewhere, and I got the magician out here again now, 1111, with the four aces on the table, the ones of the four suits. So your person, this is a celebration energy of the thing that your person wanted. They're not waiting on it anymore. It is now physically manifested in reality it's here it's it's stable in the physical reality and there's a celebration for it but it's also the change in the luck and fortune of the stability of your connection with them whether that's home and family life included or not knight of swords this is the fastest moving knight in the deck so literally the three fastest energies i could get i've got i've got them all this is the person who rushes forward and takes this rapid, decisive action on something, usually they haven't even thought about it first. This is like just spur of the moment, spontaneous, abrupt, like bat out of hell, like impulsive, like don't need to think, I'm just doing it. They don't think about it until after it's already done. Three of Wands. So now we're going backwards from Four of Wands to Three of Wands. This is the card that comes before when the thing finally shows up. This is where like, I know what I want and I've started down the path toward it and I've started taking actions trying to manifest the thing that I want and I firmly believe it's going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet and I'm waiting on it to materialize. But that's beside where they leave you. They, they leave you in this spot where... You're expecting that, okay, yeah, this is going to go right, finally. Yes, this is going to turn into the Ten of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups that I want, finally. And I'm still waiting, I'm still waiting. And they keep you in that spot, trapped in that constant waiting while they're out doing whatever they want. The only card that has nothing in a row with it so far is the Magician, the Master Manifester slash Master Manipulator. Final card in your person's energy, Virgo. I'll be so glad to get out of this piece of shit's energy. I really will, because they're like they're they're taking me from feeling like I'm about to ball my eyes out to feeling like I'm about to fucking rage, and I'm I don't like either of those feelings. The devil, like I said, Capricorn's major arcana. It's toxic energy. This is this is not who you're supposed to be with. Look, look at the fool. He's in this cage, and he's got his eyes covered because he doesn't want to see. He doesn't want to face the situation that he's in. 
And if he did, he thinks he's trapped. He's in a cage, but the cage door is wide open. The chains that are connected to the devil are connected to the cage, not him. If he would have the courage to face the situation and actually look at it for what it is, he would see the cage door is open and he can just walk right out and there's nothing the devil can do about it. This type of a person only has the power over you that you willingly give to them by refusing to face what's actually happening. This person doesn't do that. This person, this is an energy of control, but it's not a person who's in control. This is a person who is not in control of pieces of themselves. In fact, those pieces of themselves are in control of them. When you're with a person like this, you're chained to that thing that controls them and it controls you too. And you stay with them long enough, it distorts who you are and you start to develop false beliefs that this is the lovers. The You start to develop false beliefs that this is the Ten of Cups when it's not. I'm telling you right now with 100% certainty, I would bet everything I have, I'd bet this whole channel, I'd bet all of it on this. You are never going to see a Ten of Cups relationship that has the karmic hamster wheel in it, number one. You're never going to see a Ten of Cups relationship with someone you're supposed to be with where the devil's here twice, let alone when the karmic hamster wheel is here twice. This is not this is not the Ten of Cups. This has never been the Ten of Cups. If you felt like it was and you believed it was, it's either because you wanted it so bad that you didn't want to see some things and you chose not to, or they manipulated the hell out of you into getting you to do that, or both of those things at the same time. But I can promise you with everything I am that this is not the Ten of Cups. And it's not ever going to be the Ten of Cups. It's so weird because even these cards, not only here on both sides, they came out in the same order. Wheel of Fortune first and the devil next. And it did the same thing on your person side. But this is your person being a toxic. I'm just going to stop. <laughs> Tell me about this devil card, please. Why is this here for Virgo's person at April 2024? Jesus. Bottom of the deck. The Empress. This is the mother of the deck. This is the birth of something new. It can also be the rebirth of something. If you're rebirthing this with them, you're just rebirthing more madness. That's that's all this is. This is them. They're, they're going to keep birthing new things. There's no question about it. They don't have the ability not to. They're controlled by something that needs addressed. And they don't have the courage to face it. And up until this point, there's piece of if for at least someone watching this they didn't have the courage to face this either which is why they're still here but this needs faced this person uses this rebirthing it starting over at square one and filling the love cup back up with you they use that as the way to trap you they keep you in that cage because this is what you want and they know that's what you want like rule number one if like marketing is like know who your customer is and know what is the most important fucking thing in the world to them and you make your offer about that that's exactly what they're doing they know what you want is to birth this connection with them and they're using that against you blending it back together be patient king of swords they got a plan and they they have a plan. This is not somebody flying by the seat of their pants with you. They know exactly what they're doing. When I clarify the devil, queen of pentacles, the hermit, and the king of cups. Queen of pentacles. We already saw that. That's so weird. That happened in your energy. Your first card was seven of pentacles in central column. I got seven of pentacles in your clarifiers. Here, I get queen of pentacles in the clarifiers. When Queen of Pentacles was their first card, even though it's in reverse. This is still, I'm trapping wife. 
controlling wife, my inner demons that I'm not in control of are controlling wife. Yeah, look, wife, stability of home, family, and connection, dead. Here, wife upside down, dead. Repeating cycle of toxic behavior. The hermit. This is, I saw the hanged man toward the beginning. It, and I said that that's somebody who's probably looking externally for what's at fault. It, this is like, I do the toxic stuff, but I blame you for it. You know, like, it's that kind of a thing. It's not me. I don't have any reason to look at myself because none of this is my fault. I didn't make this mess. You did. Had you not did this, that, and the other thing, then I wouldn't have done this. It's like that kind of a response. And when I have the hermit here, that's the opposite of that. This is taking that divine light from the universe. What's in the, the, ham, the, the lantern here for the hermit is this star energy. So again, this is like, hey, I got your hope right here. See, I got it right here. This is like, I'll make adjustments. I will, I will look at me and I will make adjustments to me and I will be able to move forward with you the way that you want. But I'm not actually doing any of that stuff because this card is here. If, if I was doing any of this stuff, there would be no devil card here. This is like, I'm using that. I'm telling you that story as my way to control you. King of Cups. I'm pretending to be this other half to the cups equation i saw queen of cups yeah right here in this column this is like yeah see i'm gonna be this for you now we're gonna be the love and emotions counterparts i need to keep you waiting on that version of me to show up this emotionally loving version of me waiting on that stuck in your head waiting on that the only card see that that happened over here. At first, you only had one card that didn't have anything by it in the row. Judgment. But now you can see that you could be resurrecting the devil here. The toxic relationship that you're not supposed to be in. Or you could be calling judgment and passing judgment on this toxicity. And calling it dead and over with. And no more. We're not talking about it anymore. It's done. No coming back. On their side, the only thing that has nothing in a row with it is this idea of the magician, this master manifester, the person who creates this entire situation through their thoughts and their actions and their will. This is a manipulative person based on everything I've seen out there in their energy. Again, not, not my place to tell you what to do. It's, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to get you insight. I'm here to get you clarity so you can get the answers to the questions that you have and insights on how you're thinking about all of this that way you can come to the best the best decision for you and your own greatest good that's all that's the only reason i do this is the only reason i'm trying to like be as honest with you about what i see and feel as i can because i can't help you if i sugarcoat this and and don't tell you everything that i see I wish, I wish you the best. I really do. This person is like, I got to go take a break because this person has gotten to me. I'm done. Now, if you still have questions you want answered about this situation or your relationship, click on any of the videos that just appeared on your screen right now. And when you do, you'll be taken to more Virgo love readings that can give you more insight and more clarity about what's really going on in your particular situation. And I'll see you in the next video.